All right, everybody, it is time for that comparison video that we promised earlier. 3,000 images with my Seastar S50 here at home versus 3,000 images from my Seastar S50 at Starfront in Texas. Here it is in all of its glory mounted under just the most amazing, beautiful skies that are the most affordable. And that is the key that you are going to see here is that there's a lot of things that we can get away with these days with software and everything else. Time on target and dark skies are just the king, like everybody says. So let's talk about it right now. I'm Chad. This is the Easy Astro Images channel. We are going to play with some photons today. Big shout out to all of the channel subscribers. We finally hit 10. Let's try to see if we can get that to 20. If you want to join down below or drop me a link in the buy me a coffee thing, we got that set up as well. I appreciate all the help, but most of all, I just love interacting with you guys and hopefully trying to just like pave the way for easy, cheaper, better astronomy. I mean, if you take a look at this here, you see S50s, S30s. Imagine what this is going to look like in a year from now when we have possibly pro versions of the 30s, maybe a 70, whatever. It is certainly an exciting time, and I'm happy to like be part of, you know, just the beginning of everything here. So we can just take a look at the sky right now. You can see that there's a little bit of clouds that's going on here in uh, Texas right now, but, you know, we'll just fire things up anyway. Uh, you take a look at this clear sky chart. Everything is just always looking solid down there. I think last night was one of the first nights that we actually didn't get a full night of shooting. And my scope is in building number nine, which the camera looks like it might be offline right now because they're probably doing things with the roof and opening it up. But stuff seems to kind of go away. But anyway, let's get to the data. So I actually, to get these two images here, I had 6,200 images, 20 second exposures from Starfront. And I had about 3,300 images from my house here, portal five, six, let's say six here in Ohio. So I basically got rid of about 15% of the data here at home and I eliminated 53% of the data so we could do an apples to apples comparison. Now we're gonna come back in another video and process all of it out. 3,000 20 second exposures is about 17 hours worth of integration. So if we take a look at things from the start here, my home is on the left, Starfront is on the right. Pretty obvious that like there's no color casting because we're not picking up the light pollution and all that kind of stuff down at Starfront. You know, when it comes to like star qualities and everything like that, you know, we're dealing with C stars, we're dealing with the S fifties, whatever it's, it's going to be, it is what it is. The whole key is that like it's cheap, we're able to do this. We're able to just collect tons of data and just work and focus and have fun on the processing skills. So we could do a lot with both of these images when it comes to processing. The difference is pretty shocking though when you look at just like what you get. So we'll go ahead and minimize these here. And I want to show you, I did my best to process both of these equally at the same time. We did a lot of like one push scripts things like that. So that way people, you know, weren't, uh, there's no deception or anything else going on. So this is from home. So you can see everything looks pretty good. We've got very good detail going on in the bubble. We're exposing some of that stuff in the back. You know, we still left a little bit of noise and grain in there. So we've got details. We, I've been working a little bit differently on the processing stuff that I do. So that way we're not, you know, really just hammering things with like noise reduction and star reduction, just trying to refine my processing a little bit more. So we can see we've got some issues here with some brighter stars that we could take care of. So again, these were just like quick little processes that we do. So let me zoom out here and you can take a look right there. Again, this was the 3,000 images from home. 
And now here is the 3000 images from Starfront. And right away, you're just going to see that, uh, wow, holy cow, we just picked up way more stuff uh, here in the background and everything else. And the background is a little bit muddy because, you know, we still need to process all of that stuff because I threw away half the data. I mean, I'm sure I could basically get rid of a lot more of the data, but again, same telescope, same exposure. This is what you get when you are able to collect data at will pretty much, and you're just shooting from dark skies. So we were able to pick up all of this extra deep nebulosity all over the place. Now, if you zoom in like to the actual details of the image, I mean, they kind of both hold up together. It's not like it's a shocking difference. There is a lot more. It's very weird because I've kind of like analyzed these images myself. And again, trying to like be as close to, you know, taking care of things as I could. We can obviously see that the coloring is different and everything, even though tried to make it as close as possible. Like I said, using like one push scripts and everything, but you know, you can see right away that you just have a lot. Like there's definitely more detail going on over here. There's definitely way more color in the background, but then like in some areas, you know, it almost looks like, you know, like right here, if we look below the bubble here, it almost looks like there's actually more detail in the other picture than in the star front. And I think the reason why that kind of happens is that like, we're starting to soak up all of this stuff. And if I added in those extra two or 3000 images, then we would pick all that up. And, you know, like I said, we will process that all again, but you know, when we look out here and we see stuff that we are starting to pick up and add texture and everything into compared to, you know, the image here at home. I mean, it's just not even close. Like there's just nothing out here at all. I mean, you know, we could see that we're starting to just resolve some of this detail out here, but it would take so much more exposure time to try to get some of this. Uh, I did drizzle this to like one times too. So the stars are a little blocky, probably could handle a little bit more drizzling that. So the biggest thing dealing with these is like how many exposures that you have, like the Mac mini was able to handle everything, uh, processing everything. So I use SETI Astro, uh, uh serve I used SETI Astro Pro to go through and do all of the culling of the data, just the easiest, best way to do it. And then I used the Nastromedy uh, stacking, smart telescope stacking script inside Serial just because it's like super easy. So I'll probably mess around and see if I can do that kind of stacking and stuff in PixInsight, see how fast it goes, see how fast it goes in SAS Pro, you know, trying to keep on the whole easy and cheap type of thing. Um, it's a hard, we've got cheap nailed down for sure, but now trying to like figure things out a little bit more, you know, cause you know, I would basically say at this point that we're definitely a C star power user. And, you know, I want to produce the best images that I can with the C star, but I also want to make it as realistic as possible for you guys. So even though we'll be doing stuff in PixInsight and Photoshop and everything else, hopefully it encourages people to just like go ahead and do something like that. Or, you know, again, like, do you really need, we're showing you proof positive here, a $2,000 camera switching from color to mono and all the filters and stuff isn't really going to do much for you when it comes to light pollution. Take that $2,000 that'll pay for like 10 months of like your heavy of your like small, medium pier, whatever at Starfront. Send everything down there. It's so easy. Like really, I need to just try to encourage people to start thinking about how you use your astronomical equipment in a different way. Like it's fine to like be a gearhead and play around at home and everything like that as well. But if you have a system and you have a budget, you know, like there's, this is how you 
can evolve. Like it just gets no better than this. Everything that everybody always said about dark skies and everything else is totally true, even from a $500 telescope. So what else can I say? So come back for some of the processing stuff. Can't wait to show you guys that working on it right now. So we will talk to you all later. Peace.